Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we'll be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Massimo Corporation, ticker symbol MASI. We'll be looking at Massimo's financials to come to a fundamental understanding of the business and give us a starting point about how to think about the business. So at the time of recording this video, Massimo is trading for just over $129 per share. Their stock price was pretty steady over the past year until recently. In February, they had this huge decline, and from their peak at the end of 2021, they're down nearly 40%. Going back over the past 10 years, however, even in spite of their recent decline, Massimo still delivered returns of about 20% compounded annually, which is well above the S&P 500 during this time period. Looking at their 52-week high and low, Massimo's about $17 over their 52-week low, and they've been more than cut in half from their 52-week high. The company does have a bit of short interest around it, and the business is about a $7 billion market cap right now. So for some background understanding about Massimo, Massimo Corporation is an Irvine, California-based medical device company that focuses on non-invasive patient monitoring. It began by developing superior signal processing algorithms to measure blood oxygenation levels through pulse oximetry and has expanded this expertise into a wide range of measurements and applications. The company generates revenue globally, with the United States being its largest market at about 67% of sales, followed by Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, which is 21% of sales, Asia and Australia at 9%, and North and South America, excluding the U.S., at about 3%. The company was incorporated in 1989 and is headquartered in Irvine, California. So let's get right into our fundamental analysis. We'll be performing an eight pillar analysis as popularized by Everything Money to look at the business's financials and come to a beginning understanding of Massimo. Starting right off with pillar number one, we want their average five year PE to be below 22 and a half. So their current PE is just around 33. And over the past five years, they've traded at an average PE of about 48. So pillar number one is going to be an X. Pillar number two, we're looking at how the business is able to earn returns on capital. We want their average five-year return on capital to be above 9%. We can see that Massimo has above average returns on capital. However, they've been slightly declining over this period going down each year. Nonetheless, Massimo still averages about 20% returns on capital over these five years. So that's a check. If we were looking at the business in more depth, this decreasing return on capital is definitely something that we'd wanna understand better. Pillar number three, we wanna see five-year revenue growth. So in 2017, Massimo had $790 million of revenue, and they increased this to $1.2 billion of revenue in 2021. So that's a check there. Scrolling down on their income statement and then coming right back up, Pillar number four, we're looking for five-year net income growth. So net income is the column in white here next to their revenues. In 2017, they had $125 million of net income, and they grew this to $230 million of net income in 2021. So back-to-back -back checks on revenue and net income growth. Pillar number five, we want to see decreasing shares outstanding. This is something that a lot of investors don't pay attention to, but is really a silent killer. We don't want a business to be issuing new shares and diluting existing shareholders because it ultimately means that you're entitled to less of the business's profits over time. In 2017, Massimo had about 56 million shares outstanding. In 2022, they have just under 58 million shares outstanding. So this is slight dilution. It's not terrible. It's only about 3%. And so pillar number five is going to be an X. However, we can live with this with the rate that the business is growing. So next up for pillar number six, we want to see five-year free cash flow growth. Free cash flow is cash from operations minus capital expenditures, and free cash flow is what you want to think about when you're evaluating a business. All businesses are worth the sum of all the future cash flow that they'll generate from between now and judgment day, discounted back by a reasonable interest rate. If we can figure out what the value of their future cash flows are and discount it back, then we should pay a price significantly below that to add in a sufficient margin of safety. So for pillar six, we're looking for five-year free cash flow growth. So free cash flow is this column in green here. In 2017, they had about $12.4 million of free cash flow, and they grew this to $240 million of free cash flow in 2021. One thing we can see is that compared to their cash from operations, Massimo really doesn't need a lot of capital expenditures. So this means that they're a relatively asset light business. 
Averaged out over these five years, Massimo earns about $153 million of free cash flow each year. We'll be using that average five-year free cash flow in pillars seven and eight. Looking at their balance sheet, we want to understand how Massimo is utilizing leverage. So we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities, minus cash and equivalents, to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by five. We can see that they have negative net debt, which means that if they paid off all their liabilities, they would still have cash left over. Massimo is sitting on about $712 million of cash and equivalents, so they have plenty of breathing room and quite a bit of cushion on their balance sheet. That's nearly a seventh of their market cap just sitting in cash and cash equivalents after their debt is paid off. So this means that they have a very strong balance sheet. This is a really reassuring sign to see on pillar number seven. That's a big check. Finally, the big pillar of them all, we want Massimo's market cap to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by 20. So this will give us a better sense of their free cash flow profile and understand how their market cap compares to their free cash flow yield. So currently, Massimo has a market cap of about $7 billion, multiplying their average five-year free cash flow of $153 million times 20 brings us to $3 billion. So this is less than half of what their current market cap is. So this is going to be an X on pillar number eight. So in summary, Massimo checks the box on five out of eight pillars. They're a strong and growing business, but they require some more work into the business to determine if their growth and high returns are sustainable. They only miss out on our valuation pillars, and they've got a pretty nice balance sheet. So that's great to see. Just to make note of, Massimo is included as a tiny, tiny portion of Terry Smith's Fundsmith portfolio. But as investors, we want to do our own homework to understand how durable their growth and high returns are really going to be. So our next steps for Massimo would be to read through the company's filings, understand their quarterly and annual reports, and work to determine if Massimo really has durable competitive advantages in the medical devices industry. That's it for our fundamental analysis of Massimo Corporation, ticker symbol M-A-S-I. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next. Thanks for learning about Massimo with me, and have a great day.